Hello guys, welcome to this third video. So on the last one we got to define the main profile code for our bridge and we also distributed some parabolic arcs on it. So on this one we're gonna use these two elements to create a base surface that will define the roof shape of our bridge. So I'm gonna start by tweaking up the parameters we already have. So I'm gonna set up my height, I think like 11, it's okay. For the length I'm gonna go a little bit wider, so I'm gonna set up this slider up to 70 and perhaps I'm gonna put here like 64. And I'm gonna tweak this radius. I'm gonna see here. This one to 25 and yeah, I think something like that. We want like a soft curve something like this okay so now I'm gonna make a copy of all the elements that compose my profile curve as I want to define a secondary curve to define the boundary of my surface so I'm gonna go ahead and copy all these elements I have here to here would be okay and I'm gonna copy them and I'm gonna paste them right down here Okay, so I'm gonna start tweaking the parameters of my second curve to define the edge, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna move my height, I think a little bit lower, something like there. And Here, I think that seems about right. And remember, this, these are parameters you can always be playing with just to define the shape. I think that looks about right, so the only thing you may want to watch out is to check that our second profile curve is intersecting with our first and last arcs and that it is slightly below the first one. So it would be something like this. As you can see, my secondary curve is intersecting with my first arc and is slightly uh, below the first profile curve that I have here. So this is the only condition you may want to look up right now. And the rest, as I told you before, you can play and tweak all the, the parameters that we have here. So I'm going to leave that like, like this. Okay, so now I'm going to change my view to perspective mode.
And what we're going to do is to trim our parabolic arcs using our secondary curve we have here in order to have the segments we're going to need to create our base surface. So I'm going to start extruding the secondary curve I have here in the y-axis and on both directions so I can have a couple of b-reps to trim my arcs with. So I'm going to call an extrude component. And also a y-vector. And I will just want to make sure that uh, my extrusion is intersecting with all the curves we, are, we have here. So I'm going to set this value up to 15 perhaps. Okay, some, something like that now. And the next thing I'm going to do is create another extrusion for the other side. So I'm going to copy this one. And here I'm just going to add uh, a mathematical expression that says whatever value comes into D multiplied by minus 1 so it goes on the opposite direction so it would be something like this and then I'm going to call a split with bereps component as we're going to use more than one to split our curves It would be this one. And for my curve input, I'm going to give my arcs that I have here. And for the B-reps, I'm going to select my extrusions. And now, as you can see, we have a new set of points indicating the zones where our arcs were trimmed or splitted, sorry. So I'm going to call a panel component. And as you can see now, each of our orig original arcs got split into three segments. So as I want to retrieve only the segment that it's on the middle, I'm going to call an item component. And I'm going to set it up to retrieve the index one of each list, as that is the segment I want to keep. So now I'm going to hide my original arcs here. And my extrusions. And now finally, I can use these segments to create a loft surface. Okay, so as you can see, I have an error here, and that is because, as you can see here, each one of my curves is uh, on a different list, and what I need for my loft uh, component to work properly is to have uh, all the curves in one single list, so I can fix that easily by setting this to flatter. And now, as you can see, all my curves uh, belong to one single list, and of course, my loft component can work properly. So now that we have this surface, the last part of this video will be extracting some subsurfaces from it. And these ones will define the panels and structural grid of the bridge roof. Okay, so now for the sake of this exercise, we're going to do this subdivision by using the parametric domain of the surface. I'm talking about the U and V parameters of it. So I'm going to go ahead and call a divide uh, domain component. And I'm going to reference my surface here. And I'm going to add a couple of sliders here. 
and set them up to integers. And I'm going to set up just a value here. 16. And then I'm going to call an isotrim component to do the actual subdivision. And I'm just going to hide some of the points we have here. And now we have our surface divisions. Okay, so uh, this is supposed to be an exploratory model. Using this kind of surface subdivision is okay just to give us an idea of how our design might look like. However, it's important to mention that if we were actually gonna build this, we would rarely use this kind of subdivision. This is mainly because these subsurfaces are bound to the specific conditions of the surface, which in most cases produce a huge array of different pieces, and that is not something ideal for a real build project, in which you have to take into account the standardizations and avoid as much as possible certain conditions such as torsions or double curvatures. For example, here on the edges you can see how our subdivisions get squeezed and we have a huge differentiation between elements. On further courses, we will cover how can you actually rationalize complex surfaces like these ones into actual buildable geometry sets. But as I mentioned before, this is just a model for doing formal exploration, so it's okay for us to do it in this way. Okay, so that will be all for this video. On the next and last one, you will learn how to use this information to pull out the structural grid and other elements of the design. So thanks a lot for watching.